This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2019 Lincoln Navigator Reserve L. Up front is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Guys, I am super excited to be driving this here Navigator for a couple of different reasons. First of all, this is the Navigator L, which means it's slightly longer than the normal Navigator. And the second reason is because I know I'm gonna be comfy in this review. You know, some reviews I really shove myself into Miatas and K cars and coupes, but this, this I know that I'm going to be comfy. And I like that a lot. Now, before we get on to the rest of the video, if you guys are interested in selling your car, please click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com will buy your car with a salvage title, good title, running, non-running, whatever it is, please go support the channel by clicking the link in the description below. You can get a fast and easy quote for free and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. But let's get back to that twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. It is an EcoBoost engine from Ford. This is a Ford product. I know it's Lincoln, but it's really a Ford. And it's the same thing you'll find in the Expedition that I reviewed a while ago, as well as I also reviewed another Navigator, but I wanted to get my beak wet once again with the Navigator because I think these things are so cool. Horsepower and torque I will put up on the screen, as well as now I will put up the fuel economy, nothing too crazy. Uh, for those of you that are interested in that, but really, you don't buy this for the fuel economy, you don't really buy this for the power numbers, you buy this as a chauffeur's car. This is very much a chauffeur's car. I am driving it right now, but where I really wanna be is the back seat. And so we have a couple different drive modes we'll talk about later on but for now we are going to put it into excite mode and uh we'll do a little bit of an acceleration test 3.5 twin turbo <laughs> i actually felt it in my stomach a little bit it's not bad i mean it's not the fastest thing in the world but you first of all you do hear turbo spool pretty loud, which I love. But also you have to remember that when you're accelerating, I mean, this is bigger than some of my friend's apartments. You're moving a lot of mass. And so the fact that it even gets up and goes at all is awesome. Like I said, paired to it, automatic transmission, of course, 10 speed from Ford, really, really smooth, really supple. I haven't even noticed a gear change quite yet besides of course that acceleration test. So it's nice and smooth and I really, really like that. Last but not least, this Navigator is four wheel drive and we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. So let's talk about the interior because this is the important part of the Navigator. This is the cool part. This is the part you're going to want to know about. So in front of me, I actually have digital gauges. So right now I'm driving it in conserve mode, but just to keep things simple, I'm gonna go through all the different drive modes because it actually changes the gauges. All right, so when in excite mode, which we get these nice like taillights going down a curvy road, on the left-hand side, I have my tachometer, and on the right, I have my speedometer. Very clean and simple. Down at the bottom, of course, I have my coolant temperature, my fuel, and what gear I'm in, and up at the top, that is what song is currently playing which I think is funny because it doesn't like scroll or anything. It just says it in text. That's excite mode. Then we go over to conserve. And on the left is my MPG gauge with my average MPG in the middle. And then on the right is my speedometer. If we move it over to normal mode, which says effortless and balanced, it just has my miles per hour in the center. Only thing I have to worry about. Normal four wheel drive auto, it says confident and secure. Again, I only get my miles per hour in the center. Then I have slippery, again, miles per hour just in the center. Then I have deep conditions, miles per hour gets moved over to the right. I have a tachometer on the left and my degrees of steering. So this is really nice. If you have the steering wheel turned all the way around, it's actually 18 degrees of steering. You can tell what your wheels are doing in case you're in the mud, in case you're in the snow, you can't quite tell if you're on ice. 
things like that, that is absolutely brilliant that they give you that information. And of course, RPM, if you're sliding in the snow, if you're flooring it, but you're not moving anywhere and you can't really tell, it actually gives you your RPM. That is super, super smart. So those are the different gauges. I usually keep it in conserve for efficient driving. And I love that globe icon that comes up really, really special. Up above the gauges, I do have a heads up display giving me a ton of information. My lane keep, miles per hour, outside temperature, current time, and miles till empty. This is great for someone who is going to be a service driver. When you're driving someone around, oh man, I gotta get them to this concert you know, at 1030, I'm looking up on the heads up display and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna make it. Things like that, that's really, really cool. Outside temperature, you know, maybe I can tell the people in back, hey, you know, it's 53 degrees right now, you might wanna grab a jacket. Distance till empty, of course, great, great info up on the screen because this is a vehicle that you're gonna shave off miles in. You're gonna go forever and ever and ever. And so I like having that information there. I don't have to take my eyes off the road. I can drive as safe as possible. On the steering wheel, on the left, we have volume and skip track, our cruise control options at the bottom left. And then on the right, I have my controls for that center screen we just talked about and my phone options down at the bottom right. The steering wheel itself feels pretty nice. It is leather wrapped, has this nice little piece of wood down at the bottom. However, I could definitely see this starting to get worn out over time. I do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel, which is kind of nice. But like I said, I, I could see this is the type of leather that if you don't keep up with it, it will start to scratch, it will start to fade and things like that. So if you do buy a Navigator, just keep that in mind. You might wanna keep up with it as best you can. To the left of me, I have my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switches, my tailgate button, and my pedal adjusters. So if you are a little bit shorter, you can move the pedals closer to you so you're not sitting on top of the airbag. You can actually move the pedals closer, move your seat a little bit closer, and really get that comfortable driving position. On the door, I have my memory seat options, which my seat is not the 32-way adjustable seat available in some navigators. However, it feels like it's 32-way adjustable. I can adjust just about everything in this seat and that's very very nice three different memory seats as well which is great especially if you have different drivers if you are a car service company you can have three different drivers save their settings and so they hop in when they are going to pick up a guest bada bing bada boom their settings are right there and i absolutely love that then down below i have my power locks and power windows Moving into the center, first of all, up on top of the dashboard, I do have a Revell speaker, it has a very nice sound system in here. And then I have my center display. I'm a big fan of the center display for a couple of different reasons. First of all, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which I think is great, and it works with the sync system from Ford. Great. Also, I love that it's very full color, very responsive to the touch feels great, looks great. And a couple of things in here, I do have ambient lighting settings, which is one of my favorite Lincoln features because I can choose white, amber, teal, red, blue, green, or lilac, which is really, really nice. And I like the animation of when you open it, they sort of like spin out. I don't know, I, I think that's cool. Why don't more auto manufacturers do that? Just have a little bit more pizzazz. I'm spending a lot of money with you. Give me a little bit of showboatiness. Unfortunately, this Navigator does not have the massaging seats. I was hoping that it did, but unfortunately it does not. However, that is an option. You can spec out for your Navigator. You can get massaging seats. It's the same massaging seats you'll find in the Platinum Ford F-150s or the old Ford Taurus SHOs. I drove one of those with the massaging seats. They're great. They don't like, it, it, it's not like this hard pumbling massage. It's like a soft, supple thing just to keep your blood moving. So on a road trip, your legs don't get stiff after a couple of hours. Last thing I'll say about the center screen is that I do have a Wi-Fi hotspot available. You can pay for a package to get a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can set personal profiles for the vehicle. So that'll keep all of your settings. If you have multiple drivers, they can just hop in select their setting or you can set it to the key and bada bing bada boom their seat settings everything like that is all set up and i absolutely love that down below that center screen i do have two climate control vents and a camera button so the navigator is outfitted with a 360 camera which is magnificent because this is such a large vehicle the camera quality is okay it's not the best in the world it's not super hd it's not 4k however 
the fact that it has it at all is very, very nice, and I can toggle that whenever I want. I also do have a front view camera for a vehicle this large that is almost a necessity, um, especially if you are shorter, you can't quite see over the front. There is a nice front facing camera you can toggle on, but it goes away above five miles an hour. Down below the climate vents, this is where the shifter is. So the shifter is very untraditional in the fact where it's just park, reverse, neutral, and drive that are buttons. Two or three years ago, if you would have shown me this, I would have been like, ah, it's so stupid. But now I actually sort of like it. Sort of coming around to the fact of like, yeah, who cares? Make it whatever you want. The buttons feel really solid. They do have a pretty satisfying clunk when you hit them. And it actually does feel like, you know, when I press the park button, it's, mm, it's in park. I like that. Then we have our climate controls, as well as a couple radio options up the top, volume and tune, skip track, power, and rear locking. And then of course, like I said, the climate controls, nothing really too crazy here besides the heated seats and ventilated seats. Very, very nice to have three different levels of each of those. And then we come to the center console. The center console is finished in wood. I do have these nice soft opening cubbies. On the right is my cup holders and on the left, is actually where I'll find my USBs for that center screen. Really, really like that because it, it's nice and hidden away if I want it to be. I can just shove my phone in here, close it up, and run everything through Apple CarPlay. Keeps it nice and clean up here, which is a huge win. Then I have a couple of interesting buttons down by the armrest. So of course I have my power parking brake, nothing too crazy there. My automatic start stop on and off, so I can actually toggle it off if I don't want that which is very, very nice. My auto holding brake, a great feature, my parking sensors, and my parking assist. So the navigator will actually help you parallel park, which is a very, very cool system that I will not be demonstrating. A, because I don't have any cars out here to demonstrate with, and B, this is not my car. So in case Ford didn't perfect their system, I don't wanna be liable. However, it's available here in the navigator, and I think that that's really, really cool. Then of course we do have the drive mode button. Like I said earlier, this is how you select those drive modes, you know, conserve, excite, normal, normal four wheel drive, things like that. I do have two nice little armrests and that finishes out the center console. Like I said, the seats are memory, power, heated, cooled, anything you want out of the seats besides the massaging feature, this has it. I can also even adjust either side of the bottom of it, which is interesting, but nothing to complain about. Now, this is the navigator. Let's jump in the back because that's where you really want to be. All right, so we're in the back of the 2019 Lincoln Navigator Reserve L, and I have this beautiful, beautiful center console here I really, really like because I get actually a little digital readout showing me what song is currently playing, time, whose device is hooked up, and the outside temperature. So I get this nice little digital readout. I can also volume up, volume down from right here, skip track, source, things like that. So I can actually control the front radio and I can actually override the front radio from back here, which is really, really nice. If my driver is not playing the song that I like, Boom, skip track. Nice and comfortable armrests that also open up. Nothing in there besides just a little light, but nice storage. I do have the two cup holders up here as well. And then in front of all of that, I do have my sunroof blinds closed, which my GoPro is actually currently sitting on that, so I won't close those. Then I have my own air conditioning options. Of course, heated seats back here. No ventilated seats, something I would have liked to have seen. However, that's okay. But down below that, I have two USB outlets, a cigarette lighter, 12 volt outlet, and then a wall outlet, which is absolutely amazing. 110 volts, 150 watts wall outlet. So I can plug in whatever I want. If I want to charge my camera back here, I can do that. If I want to plug in a PS5, I can do that back here. There's no screen to play that PS5 on, but I can at least plug it in. I, I don't know. Then I have a little cubby hole with flip out cup holders down below that. Kind of curious if they give you cup holders down there as well as up here. Kind of interesting. I do have Ravel speakers in the doors as well. Little cubby hole here, obviously power windows, grab handles, things like that. And now I will hop into the third row because the Navigator does come with a third row. All right, so we are in the third row of the Lincoln Navigator. And interestingly enough, I actually have power seat options for this third row which is weird because the second row is not power. Those seats are not power. You actually have to pull the bar like a peasant 
in order to move forward and back. These, I actually get a power recline. It's not much, but it's honest work. USB chargers on either side. I do have cup holders on either side as well as this really long sort of tray. And then we will talk about the hatch right now. So something I can do is I can open up just the window. This is really nice if you have animals in here or something or, or anything you don't want to jump out. That's nice, 12 volt outlet right here. Love that in new SUVs. And that can be open, I don't know if you could see, there's a little car icon that actually pops the rear window. This pops the rear trunk. So let me get this window closed. And then this pops open the rear trunk fully open like that. Now this is interesting because I can hit these buttons and I can start folding down seats from back here. Look at that, goodbye. Your time has come, adios. And just like that, now you do have that big center console that's part of like the reserve L you know, because this is a driver's car, so I guess you can't really lay anything super flat, but this does give you a lot more cargo room. And then look, risen from the dead. Seats come back up just like that. The second row does not come back up with the button. These come up with the button, but those do not, unfortunately. Tailgate button here. Just like that. Very, very nice. I like that a lot. Now we gotta talk about the looks. This is called like infinite metallic black or something like that. I love it. It's nice and subtle, but powerful. One thing about the exterior that I really like is the running boards are hideaway. So when you open up the door, the running boards actually come down, help you get into the vehicle. And then once you actually are in the vehicle, they go back up and hide away for that nice look and ground clearance. I love that. Again, very subtle. Very nonchalant, and I like that a lot. You know, I always say, oh, you know, you don't wanna show up to a red carpet in this car. You don't wanna show up to a red carpet in that car. No, you wanna show up to a red carpet in this car. This is a car that you show up to a red carpet in. This is something that you go to a launch party in. This is something you get picked up from the airport and driven to another airport in this vehicle. That's what this Navigator is all about. And honestly, driving this it sort of feels like old wealth old rich you know there's a difference between old rich and new rich new rich someone who's just getting rich they buy the ferrari they buy the flashy mansion with the gold gates they buy the jewelry and the shoes it's very flashy when someone newly becomes rich it's very very flashy but then you have this generational wealth this old money these people that they're not only a part of the country club, their great grandfather founded the country club on the same wealth that they currently possess. I'm talking Vanderbilts. I'm talking Carnegie's generational wealth where the nuance is sort of gone. And it's not like, hey, let's throw a birthday bash. It's like, yeah, of course we're gonna spend $100,000 on this party. Like, it's not really a thing. Can we go to lunch now? Like, it's not that big of a deal. That's how I feel about this navigator this feels like generational wealth because i know the navigators before this were also very nice this was one of the first luxury luxury suvs in the late 90s early 2000s and still today this is so subtle so awesome just it's powerful it knows what it's doing and it's not flashy about it you know i would argue that the the escalade is more flashy it has tail lights that go up to the ceiling why it has the gauges that now go all the way across the dash it has you know air ride suspension so you can air out at the next red carpet event that's all fun and it's cool and i'm sure when i drive one of those i'll love playing with the gimmicks and stuff but there's just something about knowing what you are and not having any frills about it this is a nice luxury vehicle like i keep saying this is something that a car service would buy it's quiet it's comfortable and it's here for a job it has a 27 gallon gas tank you're gonna go a lot of places it has a great sound system it has these nice wood accents plenty of features for the back seat that's just it this is a rolling driving representation 
of generational wealth. Old money, old school money, and I love that. The Navigator is just great. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their used Lincoln Navigator. This is really, really cool, really special, and I'm glad I got to experience this again because these cars are just so great. They have hundreds of used cars on their lot at all times. This just being one of them, but they have tons of different things. If Toyotas are not your thing, if Lincolns aren't your thing, they have tons of other vehicles on the lot. I'd highly recommend going to their website. They get in new and fun cars all the time that I'm excited to share with you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. Really like to take care, guys.